Hello, I'm Michael Pierce, and this is The Human Condition. Today our topic is how do I know I need to check for heavy metal poisoning in my body? Checking for heavy metal poisoning can be done acutely and it can be done for chronic conditions. Acutely is usually done in blood and chronic is done in hair. But how do you know if you need to have the test? Generally, when a person has heavy metal toxicity chronically in their body, it doesn't show up in the blood. It shows up in the hair and it shows up in the stool and it shows up in the urine. And there are some rare tests that are in fingernails or in sweat to, to test for some heavy metals. Only uh, mercury and aluminum come out of the sweat, to my knowledge. So when you've got a problem with heavy metal poisoning that starts to make you think, a group of symptoms would be that you have symptoms that don't make sense. If you have symptoms that don't make sense that seem like they come from a hodgepodge of different diseases or they seem like they're a, a mixture of different body systems, they, they're very confusing, or they don't follow textbook rules, they don't seem to fit any category of diagnosis, when you have unpredictable responses to drugs, to vitamins, prescriptions, to supplements, to diets, or even elimination diets, when you try herbs and herbal formulas and your body just doesn't follow the rules that everybody else's body seems to follow. Another sign that might, uh, might point you toward needing a heavy metal uh, analysis uh, or testing is that you're really tired. You're, you're completely tired and fatigued and your mitochondria don't work, you don't make very good energy, and you might have disturbed sleep. Some of the other symptoms that can happen with heavy metal poisoning of a chronic low-grade nature that doesn't show up in blood would be things like skin lesions, eczema. Uh, not all eczema is caused by heavy metal toxicity, but it certainly can drive skin lesions. Uh, there are also digestive problems, digestive symptoms, and there can be neurologic problems, sensory problems, where you feel things that are strange that come and go, where you have weaknesses or instabilities, or you drop things and then you're strong again and then you're weak again, or weaknesses that move throughout your body where maybe the right hand is weak one day and then the left hand is weak and the right is strong again, or vestibular problems, balance problems. Nearly any area of the brain can be affected by heavy metal toxicity. So when we talk about heavy metal poisoning, we don't really mean poisoning in the medical sense that you're acutely poisoned and your blood is going to show toxic, say arsenic, for example. We're talking about more chronic uh, exposure, which would be toxicity, and it can build up over time, these, these heavy metals. They can build up over time in your body, and they can cause symptoms very, very slowly over time. They can also compete with your minerals, and they can make it such that when you analyze your symptoms of mineral deficiency, you might have a lot of mineral deficiency, despite the fact that you're taking minerals, because uh, heavy metals and minerals compete with each other. So you might find that when you take minerals, you don't really feel better like other people do because of the heavy metals. There are lots of sources of heavy metals, and we've got other videos that have gone over that and talked about the sources of heavy metals in, in nature and in the environment, and in the man-made environments as well as the natural world, like volcanoes and stuff like that. One of the factors that you'll see in chronic heavy metal toxicity is the tendency for chronic heavy metals and even iron, which is not a heavy metal so much as a, a, a nutrient, is to feed bacteria and unfortunate organisms in our body like cancer cells, viruses, uh, worms, a, a bacteria, fungi, this is really important, mold, all these different bad organisms that are parasitic on us, really, most of them, really enjoy and metabolize heavy metals, where our cells don't metabolize heavy metals and we don't do very well when we have them. In addition, the healthy bacteria that live in our guts that help us make vitamins, we have a bunch of healthy bacteria in our guts that help us make vitamins, and those get sometimes not work too well when there's heavy metal toxicity. Not only will heavy metals rob you of your minerals, but heavy metals can make you foster and host a really nasty type of infection. And it could be any number of things from a, from a really nasty toenail fungus to a, a pneumonia of bacterial nature in your lungs to a, a bad tooth infection. So whenever, whenever you're thinking about having a really bad infection that you can't get rid of with antibiotics or antifungal drugs, even anti-worm or, or, or other types of drugs that are used to kill parasites, you might say, well, gosh, maybe the reason I can't kill these parasites is because I'm feeding them every day. You feed them with heavy metals, or you feed them with new heavy metals that come into your body uh, on a daily basis if you're exposed, or they can be fed by the storage of heavy metals that are le left over in your body. 
You can have heavy metals stored in your bones for years and years, and it can take a long time to get them to come out. Sometimes they come out during fasting, sometimes they come out during cleanses. Uh, elimination diets can certainly cause them to come out of your bones. And one of the big things that happens in some people, not everybody, again, none of this is for everybody. These are all very nebulous symptoms. One of the things that can happen in people that have heavy metal toxicity is they can get a symptom of another problem, which is when you have bile disorders, you often get a metallic taste in your mouth. So uh, some people will report that they smell metallic smells in the air or things smell more metallic or that water or food tastes metallic or beverages taste metallic. And that can go with or without a bile problem. Generally, if you've got a heavy metal problem, your bile is trying to get rid of the heavy metals anyway. So you have both. You've got a bile problem and a heavy metal problem. Whereas some people have a bile problem without a heavy metal problem. They've just got maybe a, a clogged bile duct or, or bile stones that are developing from poor metabolism and, and uh, difficulties with the carbohydrates in their diet and other such problems. Because carbohydrates in the diet drive problems with bile salts. I realize that fat is what bile digests, and I know that many of you are thinking, well, gosh, Dr. Pierce, if you've got a problem with bile, you won't be able to digest fat. Yes, you're right. However, what leads to the problem of having the bile problem in the, in the first place? In the beginning, it's eating the carbs that gives you the problem with the bile that you then can't digest the fat. So you can get these problems with bile coupled with heavy metals because as the metals come out of your cells and go into your circulation, they will be carried through the body to your, to your kidneys and to your liver. And some of them will be cleared out through your urine, which is natural. And some of them will be cleared out through your um, stool. And But they can't get to your stool until they go through your liver and your liver will manufacture bile. And that bile laden with heavy metals will be released into the small intestine. Now the problem is that we recycle most of our bile many, many times. We're very efficient. And so we recycle our bile by releasing it in the upper part of the small intestine after the stomach. And then we suck it back in about 21 feet later toward the end of the small intestine. Not exactly 21 feet, but somewhere around the 21 feet of that small intestine. We suck that bile back in, most of it, and we recycle it and use it again. And if it's filled with heavy metals, we're sucking that heavy metal back in. We've got to realize that uh, sometimes our, our bile can give us some really strange tastes because of the heavy metals that will occur. That process can circulate through our body. We can, we can taste it in our saliva. We can smell it in our sinuses. Sometimes um, you can smell uh, some heavy metals on other people. There are, there are the occasional people that will have oxidized smells of iron and other types of smells that will come out of their body. Sulfur especially binds to a lot of heavy metals and they'll come out of your palms. They'll come out of your, your chin. They'll come out of your neck. They'll come out of lymphatic tissue, wherever you have lymph nodes. Don't forget too that, that being exposed to fungus because fungus likes heavy metals. If you get a fungal infection, sometimes the heavy metals that are in the fungus now become a part of you. So a source of heavy metals can be fungal infection. So you'll see that sometimes these, these difficulties will, will be affecting the brain. You might find um, emotional and mental imbalances that are, are problems with emotion regulation. You might find yourself being uncharacteristically emotional, angry or vicious or violent behavior is often common with heavy metals. You might find yourself lashing out in ways that aren't, aren't characteristic of you. In fact, um, Dr. William Walsh and, and several other doctors have discovered that uh, violent criminals in the Chicago criminal system actually had problems with heavy metal toxicity. Toxicity, and you could predict the violent uh, characters based on hair analysis and blood analysis of, of some of these people's heavy metal profiles, including things like mercury and lead and copper and, and aluminum. These are some, some problems that can happen. You may have mental processing problems where you can't think very clearly. Maybe you used to be good at math and all of a sudden you're not so good at math. Or you used to be good at reading and, and reading language or speaking and all of a sudden you can't find words, you can't speak very well, you can't use your tongue and your lips, you can't write very well and, and write words and craft words like you used to. And you you can't understand people sometimes. Some people even get hallucinations from heavy metals where they can hallucinate things that aren't there like voices and words and songs. A very mild symptom of some kind of toxicity, not just aluminum and, and metal toxicity, but really all toxicities, um, aside from word finding, might be where a person can't fall asleep, they can't stay asleep, they can't find words. Another symptom that they might have from these heavy metals is their imbalance from their sympathetic and parasympathetic system. They might not be able to regulate their parasympathetic system, so they might have a runaway parasympathetic system system, which might give them lots and lots of churning in their bowels and lots of gas sounds and lots of sounds that come from their bowel, lots of stomach grinding and, and, and churning, and then lots of diarrhea. 
Other heavy metals that a person might experience include aluminum and gadolinium. Aluminum is a metal that's in a lot of foods and a lot of things in, in the world today. They're in cooking implements, it's in pesticides, aluminum is in antacids, it's in vaccine adjuvants, and so we can get it from chemtrails, we can get it from all kinds of sources, and we need to be able to get rid of aluminum, and we do that normally with silica and silicic acid water. We, we may also be exposed to heavy metals from gadolinium from MRI contrasts. If we get an MRI of, of our organs or an MRI of our joints or usually an MRI of our brain or spinal cord, we might have a contrast MRI which is used to look for tumors and pathologic processes because it's a contrast media. It makes these border areas show up better on an MRI. Now, if you're looking for normal anatomy and you're looking for things like disc bulges and mechanical derangements, you don't need gadolinium. But if you're looking for cancers or other types of metastases or, or pathologic problems, infections or other weird things in the, in the central nervous system, then you need gadolinium, or at least we think we need gadolinium. So be aware that there are an emerging large number of people that are growing that are reporting problems with gadolinium contrast. And you can request to not have gadolinium. You may argue with your doctor or your neuroradiologist, and you may, may want a higher resolution MRI, which you can get where the magnet is bigger. Normally, today's magnets are only one or 1.5 Tesla in power. You can request a three Tesla or a seven Tesla MRI magnet, which costs more, but it gives a much better picture without gadolinium. Is it perfect? No. And is there a liability problem with the doctors saying, well, I didn't run gadolinium contrast so if we don't find a tumor or a cancer we may be liable yes that is a medical legal problem that you'll have to discuss with your doctor but remember you have the right to accept or refuse any medical treatment at any time whether you're a felon whether you're a, an adult whether you're a citizen or non-citizen you should have the ability to choose or not choose any medical treatment Lastly, another symptom that you might have is double vision or difficulties with your cranial nerves. Those are the nerves in your head. You might have difficulty of feeling strange sensations in your face, a lot like having MS. Very often heavy metal symptoms can mimic MS symptoms. You can have pain in your face. You can have strange par paralysis of your face that, that's transient or, or more permanent. You can have numbness and tingling of your face. And you can have difficulty moving your face or difficulty controlling your eyes where you can't necessarily control your eye movements. So that is uh, how you need to know you need to check for heavy metal poisoning.